Hi, this is Sean Duggan. In this edition of the Lightroom Viewfinder, I'm going to take a look at the import dialog in Lightroom 3 with a focus on ensuring that you know exactly where Lightroom is importing your images and also what type of nested folder structure may or may not be being created as a result of that. I'm also going to show you how to create an import preset that will save a lot of those important settings so that your Lightroom importing workflow is a smoother and easier process. All right, let's get right to it. I'm going to come down here and click on the import button in Lightroom's library module. And I already have a camera memory card connected to my computer and that's what we're seeing popping up here. Before we get into some of the details of the settings we're going to be working with, let's just take a quick overview of the terrain of the import dialog here. We're going to start over here on the left hand side. This is the from section. This is where we designate where the pictures are coming from. Again, since I have a camera memory card connected, Lightroom sees this and it's showing us that the pictures are coming from my camera memory card. Of course, if there were pictures that already existed on a folder on one of my hard drives, I could uh, use this interface here to designate a specific hard drive and a specific folder from which to import images. In the center section, of course, we have all of our thumbnails uh, of the images that are about to be imported. And then up at the top, there are four choices here that control how the pictures are imported. Only two of these are available to me when I'm importing from a camera memory card. Those are the copy photos to a new location and add to catalog uh, option, which is the default, or I can choose to copy them as DNG, where the images will be converted to the digital negative format as they're added to the catalog. I'm going to choose to just use the regular copy one for this particular uh, example. And that's going to take us over here to the third section of the import dialog, which is arguably the most important one. Uh, and that's the two section. This controls where the images are Im being imported to and also uh, other uh, things that are applied to the files as they're being imported. Now, in most cases, when people run into problems where they import files into Lightroom and they're just not really sure where they're going, it's because they haven't actually spent the time to tell Lightroom where they should be going. They just kind of come in here and uh, click the import button because, you know, they're excited about taking a look at their pictures and, and playing around with them. But if you don't designate a specific place, Lightroom will do one of two things. It will either import them to the default location, which is inside the Lightroom folder where your main image catalog lives, or it will import them to the last designated location. So what you need to do is just tell Lightroom where you want to import your pictures to and you won't run into those problems. Let's take a closer look at some of these settings here and we'll go into this a little bit deeper. First of all, in the file handling section, I'm just going to leave my preview set to minimal. Uh, if you wanted them to be a little bit bigger, you could choose standard. That does make the size of your catalog a bit bigger, but I'm just going to leave mine set to minimal. Uh, for this example, I am not going to be making a second copy of my images to a backup hard drive. Of course, that is a very useful way to back up your images as you're downloading them. But since I'm going to save these settings as an import preset, I don't want to have that be a part of the preset. I'd rather make that choice on a case-by-case -case basis. Under file renaming, I am going to choose to rename my files here and I am using a file naming template that I've already created. I don't really have time to go in and show you how to do that in this movie, but you can see here, here's a sample of what my uh, file naming preset is going to look like. Down under apply during import, I'm not going to apply any develop settings, again, because this is going to be saved as a preset and that really wouldn't be appropriate for any image to have a specific type of develop setting applied to it. I am choosing to apply my copyright information for the year 2011 and I'm using a copyright uh, metadata preset I've already created. I am not going to be using any keywords here uh, because again I'm saving these particular settings as an import preset and I don't want to have specific keywords associated with this preset. I want this preset to be applicable to any images that I import that were taken in the year 2011 because of course I do have my 2011 copyright that I am applying to them. Uh, even though I'm not applying keywords here in this instance uh, I would encourage you to take advantage of this functionality uh, when you can and apply a minimum number of keywords that are appropriate for the images that you're working with. In many cases that may just be the location or the name of the event but at least it'll get some keywords in there. 
Okay, finally we come down to the destination section and this is where we're going to be spending the rest of our time here in this video. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the folder where I want Lightroom to place these images. So I'm going to go to my image archive drive here and open up that folder and go down into the originals folder where I place my originals and I'm just going to click on originals here. Now right off the bat we can see that Lightroom is creating a series of nested folders in here. You see that this group of folders here that's kind of uh, dimmed down a little bit. It's not quite as bright as the other folder names. These are the new folders that Lightroom is going to create. So it's creating these folders and they're named a specific way based on the date uh, and it's putting them in the 2011 folder. So why is it doing that? Well let's scroll up and take a look at, at how this is controlled. First, if we go to the Organize menu, we can either choose by date or just into one folder. I think it makes sense to organize the pictures by date because oftentimes uh, different subjects, different shoots were handled on different dates. So I'm going to take advantage of that functionality. Next under Date Format, this is where I get to choose the format of the date. So you can see here that the date format here of this folder name is what corresponds to what we saw down below. It's putting them in the 2011 folder and it's naming the, the subfolder in this way. The important thing to understand about this little pop down menu here is that any of the top three choices are likely to create nested subfolders. Because every time you see a slash here, this forward slash, that is a that designates a new level of a nested folder. So for instance, in the one I have highlighted here, 2011 is one folder, then inside that's going to be a folder called March then inside that it's going to be a folder called 19 for the 19th day of March. So Lightroom's just using the current day as an example here. Let's just take a look at what that is going to look like in terms of a format. So here's my 2011 folder and you can see here that Lightroom is creating these nested folders based on the month and inside each month are uh, more nested folders based on the day. So if you find that Lightroom is creating a bunch of nested folders and you're not sure where they're coming from, that is where they're coming from, from this date format menu right here. So what you need to do is choose the type of uh, format that you want and Lightroom will name the folder that way. I'm just going to choose this one that I first had chosen up there because I think that makes the most sense for what I want to do. So this is going to place these into my originals folder, but if they were taken in the year 2011, they of course are going to be placed in the 2011 folder and that's where they're going to go. One thing you do have to be careful about is that if you choose a folder uh, that is already named, let's say 2011, and the naming format says to create a folder named 2011, Lightroom won't necessarily see that. So watch what happens if I target this other folder. And again, let me zoom up close so we can see that. You can see here that Lightroom is creating a second 2011 folder. So I already had my 2011 folder and now Lightroom's creating a secondary one. That's kind of kind of funky and I think that Lightroom should know better than that. But uh, we'll leave that uh, as it is there. I'm just going to go back and click on my originals folder and that way Lightroom does see that there is a 2011 folder there. Okay, now we're ready to create our preset and to do that I'm just going to come down to the very bottom here where it says import preset and I'm going to open that up and I'm going to choose save current settings as new preset and I'm going to uh, name this 2011 import and rename. And what this will do is, the reason I'm calling it 2011 import is that I am using my 2011 copyright metadata template in there. So obviously uh, that wouldn't be appropriate for uh, images that I import from 2010 or looking ahead into the future into 2012. So I'll just click create there and that then becomes a preset that is available to me down here, a little menu choice and I can always choose that and that will help keep my importing workflow a very smooth, efficient, and easy process. Well, I hope that those tips were useful to you, and I hope that it helps uh, keep your importing process on track. I'll see you in the next edition of the Lightroom Viewfinder.